you would have to be living on another planet, right, to have never heard anything about this case. So our question for our legal eagles this morning is, must this trial be moved in order to seat a fair jury? Let's bring them all in now. Still with me, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor David Bruno, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Joe Tamburino, and criminal defense attorney and brand new guest to opening statements, Michael Riley. Uh, Michael, great to have you. I assure you, you are in excellent company alongside Joe and David. Uh, welcome to the program and so uh, let's talk a little bit about this uh, we know uh, you have to be living under a rock to have never heard about this case seen something read something maybe watch some court TV about it but sh should this you know the the judge grant this request so as to move venue outside of Latah County will that help anything we know never hearing about the case isn't the standard, right? So what do we think? Does the defense have a good argument here? David Bruno, would you start things off for us, please? Oh, I'd love to. I want to point the audience to the Boston bombing case. All right, that is a case where there's a lockdown. There, there are people in their homes because of the disastrous trauma, right? In that case, same motion was not moved out of that venue. Now, again, different circumstances. This is over here in Moscow, but guess what? It's up to the discretion of the judge. And just because people have heard of the case doesn't mean they can't be fair and impartial. And that will be the ultimate question during voir dire when the attorneys have the opportunity to question the, wit the, the jurors, the prospective jurors. Can they be fair and impartial? And just look at Boston bombing. It didn't happen there. I don't think it should happen here. David Bruno, that's a great example. Thank you for that. Please, David Bruno, would you take us home on this case, please? Yeah, sure. What we're watching right there is the pretrial conference, and the judge has to go through all the defendant's rights, their constitutional right to remain silent, cross-examine witnesses, right to a trial, and that's where it's all laid out, exposure. And what's surprising to me is the reaction from the defendant. The defendant seemed like he didn't even know what the exposure was. He looked at his attorney, his eyebrows went up as if he didn't <laughs> have the conversation before, which is amazing to me because at that stage, you need to know what you're up against, what the exposure is, what the consequences. That's the purpose of the hearing that he's sitting at. So I'm surprised about his reaction. Right. David, thank you for pointing that out. You are spot on. I'm thinking they also didn't have a conversation about that Paisley print jacket either. Huh? That might be a little distracting for the jury. We'll leave it there. But again, today is going to be day two for this guy. So we'll keep you posted on any updates. Big thanks to David Bruno and Michael Riley for being with us this morning. Have a great weekend, guys.